word embeddings in BART. That's the most fundamental and crucial concept when you are working with BART. In this video, we will see some very simple example to understand word embeddings. Basically, this is the flow of uh, uh, string words being converted into a vector in BART. So the input is a pure string or text that gets converted to a set of tokens and then the token gets goes through a embedding layer where it is vectorized and that results in these final set of vector or embeddings and these vectors are not just any vectors they have contextual meaning to understand this let's consider this sentence uh, she is a machine learning engineer and works in california say so we need to extract the contextual embedding of each word in the sentence to do this first we tokenize the sentence and feed the tokens to the pre-trained bird model which will return the embeddings for each of the tokens and that's exactly what i'm going to do through these steps so first you need to install transformers and then I'm also importing this BERT model and BERT tokenizer. Uh, both of them I need for tokenizing and then applying the model. And my model is defined as uh, this pre-trained model BERT base uncased, one of the most popular pre-trained model available in Hugging Face Hub. So, um, and this is my sentence. She is a machine learning engineer and works in California. And the first thing I do to tokenize the sentence is define a tokenizer variable like this word tokenizer from pre-trained and to that you pass the path of the relevant model that you are using here which in this case is bird base uncased so that's my tokenizer and then i uh, just apply the tokenize method on this tokenizer to get my tokens let's run this and then i just print the tokens and these they are my tokens she is uh then uh, look at this this is an extra thing that has been added by the tokenizer uh, because machine learning has been divided into these three actually four tokens machine then hash hash lea again hash as rn and then ing engineer and works in california so those are my tokens now let's add two extra tokens to my original tokens and those two tokens are cls and separator cls is for uh, represent classifier and separator is a separator between two two sentences so that's what i'm adding to the original token run this and also run uh, print the updated tokens and now let's see so now i have uh, uh, i have two extra tokens so now after adding these CLS and separator, our token length has been increased by two and has become 14. Previously it was 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so now it is 14. Now let's say that um, following the same way that the, the way that we tokenized a single sentence, we can tokenize all the sentences in our training text corpus. But the, there is a point, there is a problem actually, that uh, the length of each sentence varies in any text corpus, right? And uh, so does the length of the token, because when the sentence varies, obviously the token length of the sentence will also vary. But the problem is that to uh, feed the text corpus to a model, we need to keep the length of all the tokens the same. And say to keep the token length the same, we keep the length of all the tokens at 16. I'm taking 16 just as an arbitrary number. There is uh, just for an example. Uh, so we keep the token length 16 for the entire sentence. That is no sentence should be having more than sentence as the token length. So if we look at our preceding example here, uh, the token length is 14. So to make it 16, I need to add some pad to the token. and so i add the pad like this tokens plus pad plus pad and that is i added two pads to make the token length 16 and i can run this updated token again and here uh, i can actually uh, do a uh, len over here and i add the pads 
two pad uh, like this tokens and then I add one pad and then the next pad and now I print the length of the token again and now it is 16. So the next step is to make our model understand that the pad token is added only to match the token length and it is not part of the actual tokens. To do this we introduce a concept called attention mask. So we set the attention mask value to 1 in all actual positions that is where there were actual tokens and we set the attention mask to 0 to the position where we have a pad token. And I do that with this uh, little uh, list comprehension note. Uh, so uh, I loop over the tokens and wherever it is not pad, I set it as 1. That is 1 if I not equal to pad and other places I set it at 0 and now print my attention mask. Let's run this code and then run this one. Cool. So we can see 1 for all these places where we have actual tokens and 0 for the last two positions because these two positions were the pad position. So there were actually no real tokens. We just added these boxes or added these sales or added this position to match the length of the whole tokens to be equal to 16. And that is the very basic and very fundamental concept of uh, tokens and attention mask in any transformer model or any BERT model. And the next concept that we discuss is unique token ID, which is about mapping all the tokens to a unique token ID. And we do that with a method called uh, convert tokens to IDs. And uh, this is a simple code tokenizer that convert tokens to ID and pass to, the, to that method, we pass the tokens and that will produce token IDs. So let's uh, print this token ID and let's see what they produce. Right. So as we can see, these are actually token IDs of uh, of each of the tokens and the last two positions are zero because they represent the padding. So here, if we match up with our original token, so let's just copy it. Let's just copy our original token list, which was this, right? Copy it and bring it down. Okay, so these are our tokens. Sorry, I pre I copy pasted in the wrong place. Let's uh, delete this one. Where is our unique token? Yeah, here it is. And okay, so these are our actual uh, actual tokens, and the unique IDs are this so here actually it means that the first token cls is represented or captured by these unique id 101 then the next one she this is uh, this is another token and this is captured by this unique id 2016 similarly ease is represented by 2003 and so on So these token IDs are indices in a vocabulary. The IDs, that is the token IDs themselves are not used during the training of a network. Rather, the IDs are transformed into vectors. Say you are inputting three words and their input IDs are 12, 14 and 4. Just as an example. So what is actually is given as input to the model is three vectors. Say each of n dimension where each ID 
that is each token id is mapped to a unique vector and that vector in the case of uh, many bot model is uh, represented as uh, 768 dimensional uh, rep uh, which represent each token so uh, in case that uh, let's take uh, take this as an example in case we have uh, 30522 tokens then we will have 30522 vectors each of dimension 768 and that will become your embedding vector to be fed into the bert model all right now let's proceed so now uh, these uh, token ids and the attention mask are kind of ready to be fed into the model and which is our model that is uh, what you already defined at the very top which is bert model from pretrain bird base uncased so before uh, feeding these attention mask and uh, the token ids i need to convert them to torch.tensor and also apply uh, unsqueeze uh, to the list that is to, to the existing tensor Torch.tensor token IDs and then similarly for attention mask. Okay. And next, uh, actually feeding this token ID and attention mask to the model. Cool, run it. All right, so that is the output of the model. And if we print just the output, this is the big, uh, big representation that we get of the output variable. So here we can see two things mainly. Uh, first, they're just telling me that the model that we have used, which is bird base, uh, bird base output with pulling and cross attention then i have last hidden state which is a tensor that's a three-dimensional tensor we can see here and we also get a pooler output that's also a two-dimensional tensor and then i get what else do i get let's come down that's a big big tensor so uh, yeah, uh, then I get the attention, cross entropy, post key values, they are all none. So let's go one by one through them. So uh, last hidden state, this is one of the most important thing that you will work with in many transformer project because that's what you take as a body of your uh, body of your base model and top of that you add another head or another classifier. So the last hidden state contains a hidden representations for each token in each sequence of the batch and the size uh, if you print last hidden state here that is you get the last hidden state by doing output and taking the zeroth element and if you do a shape on that you get this tensor which is of size 1 by 16 by 7 68 and this size actually represent the first dimension is batch size then the second one is sequence length our sequence length is 16 because we had 16 token so this actually represent the number of tokens or the max token in case you have already hit the maximum token limit of the relevant model and the last dimension is this is the hidden size that is each of these token or each of these vector will be of 768 dimension and then we have these a uh, pooler output the next one here and pooler output is the embedding of the cls special token in many cases it is considered a valid representation of the complete sentence and this one is of size batch size by hidden size and that's why it's a two-dimensional tensor whereas the last hidden state was a three-dimensional tensor and uh, just like uh, the previous one so this output uh, zero that is my last hidden state and you can access the pooler output by doing 
uh, output then passing one because you are taking the second element from the output and this is that tensor which is a two-dimensional tensor and here uh, if you do uh, let's say the size output and i take the first element dot shape yeah that gives me one by 768 that represent the batch size by hidden size so here in this video uh, we just discussed about how to extract the embeddings from the pre-trained BART model but remember these are the embeddings obtained only from the topmost encoder layer of the BART which is encoder 12 because BART has 12 layers of encoder so now the question is can we extract the embeddings from all the other encoder layers of BART the answer is obviously yes but that that will be the topic of a separate video all right that pretty much wraps up this video if you have liked this one smash the like button and also do subscribe because i'm going to do many interesting nlp projects over the coming days and weeks so see you in the next one thank you very much for watching